Hey everyone, just so you know, the following video is a clip from a show I actually do on AFTV. The full link for the video is in the description below. Thank you for your continued support, really, really appreciate it. Football is a now results business. Yep. And Kai Havertz either has to be the guy on Sunday, or he's out the team and Arteta has to find the solution. Mm -hmm. Get Rice in that eight. If we are going to have the fluidity we saw last year you know what Jacques always did he kept it simple get get Rice in that eight get him box to box give him some energy revert fully back to what we did last year if you can I'd probably go double pivot and I know it's not something he's done Partey and Rice I'd probably go double pivot and say hit them on the counter because that's the only times I've seen listen Liverpool and Tottenham we have no pace have probably been the oh, yeah. then what are we doing man right. <laughs> honestly no we've lost over the it's all injured then, then we'll Martinez is unfortunate and Saka you know played his 2000 we're not going to con control a win against C if anyone thinks that then please don't tune in on Sunday we cannot control a win with this young team against C it's not happening we'll be the first team to control a win against C in Pep's era at Manchester City name me another team that have controlled their way to a win yeah all right. there hasn't been they, they actually hasn't been, maybe you pick one a uh, one game Liverpool had or but even that it's more so yeah they, they, they've been like Gagan pressed off the pitch yeah. they've been suffocated to the point where Liverpool get the goals they need and City still have chances but ultimately Liverpool mm -hmm. are too good for them yeah I agree they've been counter-attacked yeah they've been stifled via the odd mistake and the odd you know like a Damari Gray equaliser that earns Everton a point but I get what you're saying they've been parked the bus against yeah but you're right, no one has come out of a game with 16 shots, 55, 60% possession, and limited City largely through at 90 minutes. Yep. Uh, although JT uh, Jatin says uh, Everton 4 0 Turkish. Well, that was Pep's first season, it's like though, wasn't it? Very I mean, early. Aside from his first year, I think Leicester smoked him in the first season as well. Yeah. First season was him getting acclimatised to the it, league. Yeah. This City team, I that. get it. Yeah, I get it. Turkish and I were on the full-time show talking about how we were talking about how Arsenal have got this big Man City game coming up on the weekend on Sunday. I want to sort of touch on that as we come into it. And we're in a situation where Arsenal are a team that this season want to control games, they want to have a lot of possession, that want to dictate where the option is going to be. But we're coming up against one of the best teams in the world, if not ever, when it comes to doing that in Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, who yes are missing Rodri, yes are missing De Bruyne, and yes have been vulnerable at times this season, but Arsenal are not going to control a game of football for 90 minutes against Man City. They've got to have something else to their game. Now, I just mentioned that Lons took the game to Arsenal at times. You know, they pressed, they opened up, they, they got their wing backs forward. And Arsenal, when they did win back possession, which they did on quite a few occasions, never looked like they had something going the other way. They never looked like they had a, an ability to sort of turn defence into attack very, very quickly and actually punish Lons for the fact that they were taking the game to us. If, if a Tottenham like they did the other day, if a Lons are going to you know, come and press Arsenal and make it uncomfortable, you've got to make them feel like, well, actually, we're leaving something the other way and there's a risk. Arsenal didn't do enough of that. What am I talking about here? It's quite obviously the counter-attack. Now, let's take Saka off because he comes off injured. I will have my say on that in a sec. And let's get Vieira on. Now, immediately, I'm looking at Trossard and Vieira as Arsenal's wide options here. It would help if Vieira wants to move. He's doing about as much moving in this game as he did in the game. He won't move. There we go. That's a, by the way, I'm not having a pop at Vieira, but that's quite reminiscent of his performance. Not a lot of dynamism. No, he doesn't want to move. Okay, forget it. You can stay there, Vieira. So, anyway, with Trossard and Vieira out wide, you do not have blistering pace going the other way. And I think that is the one thing I'll say in defence of the players out there. But this is a question for Mikel Arteta. Why, when you've got someone like Reese Nelson, who is a more direct attacking option, why can you not get him in this front three so that you've got something going the other way, so that you've got real attacking options that when you win the ball because Lons were committing men forward, you can then directly go the other way and say, huh, you've left some space, you know, you've left yourselves a little bit open, we're going to punish you for that. Arsenal, and partly... That was down to Lons defending, you know, transitions quite well at times. But I never felt like Arsenal wanted to go from one end of the pitch to the other particularly quickly. Now, 
This isn't just a Lons thing. This wasn't just this game in which we struggled. I want to show you this. This is a graphic that explains, if you look at the top 10 from last season in the Premier League, we put them in order of goals scored in the, or actually, yeah, we put them in order of goals scored last season in the Premier League, gets the top 10. We've got the tally of the amount of goals, the total goals they scored in the Premier League last season. We've then got CA stands for counter-attack goals and the amount of goals they scored that were on the counter-attack. And then we've given you the percentages of goals that they scored that were counter-attacks. When you look at Arsenal, not only are their four counter-attack goals the uh, second lowest, you've got Brighton and Fulham with only few, the only teams with fewer goals on the counter-attack. But if you actually look at the percentages, only Brighton have scored fewer goals. So only Brighton had a, a lower percentage of goals scored on the counter-attack than Arsenal. Everyone else, I mean, it's quite actually a staggering difference. Man City, 7.4% of their goals came on the counter-attack. Liverpool, 9.3%. Tottenham, 5.7%. Newcastle, 7.4%. Man United, 15.5%. I'm now, those are the teams I'm listing that were, you know, were finishing near the European places and higher up in the table, apart from Brighton who finished sixth. You know, these are teams that have got a counter-attack in them. They've got an ability to turn defence into attack much more so than Arsenal. Arsenal, the percentage of goals that came from counter-attacks is very, very little because they don't seem to want to go from one end of the pitch to the other particularly quickly. But when we face Man City on the weekend, like, like we mentioned with Turkish, a team that aren't going to let you control a game of football for that long, you've got to show a way to go from one end of the pitch to the other a lot more quickly. So, I want to just get the Arsenal 11 here. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see. And here you go, here are the 11s. We've got Arsenal squad at the bottom here. Now, Vieira, if he wants to move, oh, he wants to move. Vieira, for me, doesn't play in this game because I'm not sure it's suited to what we're going to need to beat Manchester City. Now, Kai Havertz is an interesting one, and I'm just going to put him up top for a second. The one thing I would do, assuming Martinelli's not available, assuming Saka isn't available because Arteta said it doesn't look good, and we'll touch on that in a sec, I'd be moving Jesus out to the right wing because he's played there before. Havertz, we'll talk about in a sec. Trossard and Havertz can quite frankly battle it out. I don't really care who starts up top. I think I, I'd prefer Trossard, but I understand that Havertz allows you to play over the press and get up the pitch a little bit more quickly. So. I'm not against Havertz starting up front in this game. I broke down how in the community should it work quite well, but I would be going for Trossard myself. And then I'm getting Reese Nelson in the team, wherever he is. Here we go. Let's put him out there. There is a hole in midfield. Rice, you're becoming a number eight, like you did in the community shield game. And fit again on the bench, Thomas Partey starts. Is it a big game? Yes, but you know what? He's missed so many of these big games. Quite frankly, he owes us it. You're coming into the team, Thomas Partey. That, just having a good look at it, that is my 11 to go out. In fact, let's get Havertz out. If you, like I said, if you want Havertz, fine. But that would be the team I would go with simply because Arsenal haven't shown anywhere near enough on the counter-attack. And I think we're going to need to be able to go from one end of the pitch to the other against Man City. So I should probably take Tom Yasu out because I would go with Ben White. And you know what, if, Tom, if you want Tomiyasu in ahead of Zinchenko, I'm okay with that too. But I think I probably would stick with Zinchenko. And that would be my team. That would be the 11 that I think can actually go from one end of the pitch to the other against Man City fairly quickly. You've got a proper midfield three there of creativity, but you can also drop into that double pivot if you need to. And you've just got a little bit of everything there in that team. And also, people might say, well, why don't you not go Trossard left, Nelson right, and Jesus up top? Cool, you can do that in game. You've got that flexibility, you can mix it up. My thing is that Trossard nits play really, really well, but doesn't have the pace on the counter that Nelson and Jesus do. So I would be going for Nelson and Jesus to stretch the game out wide. I will say we haven't seen Jesus look his absolute best on the right wing yet for Arsenal, but we know he's got it in him. He's done it very well for Man City and he's got more pace than Trossard out on that right. So that is what I would go for against Man City.